So I've had some time to play around and improve my chat GPT prompting. So in today's video, I'll be going over five tips that you can use and implement today to help you improve your inputs, improve your promptings and get better output when using chat GPT. So let's go ahead and get started. The first tip that you need to keep in mind when prompting with chat GPT is that you need to prime the AI. So essentially what this means is you need to be able to lead the AI in the right direction. When it comes down to prompting, the most important aspect is the quality of input that you give the AI will directly relate to the quality of output that you get back from the AI. Priming is essentially preparing something for use or an action. So essentially, we're going to be preparing the AI to be able to perform a specific action and get us a specific output. And we'll be going through some actual examples of priming when we go through our prompting examples. The second tip that you need to keep in mind is that you need to be as descriptive as possible. You need to be able to tell the AI exactly who you're speaking to, exactly what the topic is, and exactly what style or tonality they need to include within their outputs. And my third tip is that it's good to combine best practices. There's no one size fits all when it comes to prompting it's really a game of experimentation so you need to be able to take best practices from different youtubers or different online blogs and articles and put that all together to help you create the best prompt for your specific use case and my fourth tip is that there's actually some really good online tools that you can use to help you um, improve your prompting and again we'll be going over some of these tools in this video and lastly i have a bonus tip which i'll be revealing at the end of this video so if you want to know exactly what that is stick around until the end of this video so now let's go ahead and take a look at some specific examples of how you can improve your prompts when using chat gpt so for example let's say i wanted to write a blog post introduction about a specific topic a plain old prompt would be write a blog post introduction about this topic and you would probably be able to get a decent um, output but it would be a little bit more generic because you really didn't give the ai much information now a better prompt would be you are an expert blog post writer and you have been trained on that specific topic for over 20 years and have the most up-to-date and relevant information. Your task is to write a blog post introduction about that topic and write in the first person when applicable and write in an uplifting tone catered for an audience of entrepreneurs. So as you can see in the second example, we're being much more specific, but most importantly, we're also priming the AI. So we're telling the AI that they're an expert blog post writer and they've been trained on this topic for over 20 years. And again, this is an example of priming because you will then direct the AI into the um, mindset that it's a expert within this field and that it needs to go ahead and write the most important information. So again, we're training the AI and directing it into um, the direction so that we're able to get much better outputs. So as you can see in the second prompt, we're much more specific and we've primed the AI. So we've told the AI that they're an expert blog post writer and they've been trained in this topic for over 20 years and has the most up-to-date and most relevant information. So by doing this, we're directing the AI so that it knows that it's an expert and it knows that it needs to pull some of the most um, important and the most up-to-date information that an expert would pull if they were to write a blog post about this specific topic. And again, this is a example of priming and you can use this for any of your use cases that you have. Um, I find that this works really well um, by priming the AI and letting the AI know that it's an expert and you want to get the most up-to-date and most relevant information. You can um, really improve the quality of the output that you're getting back from the AI rather than if you were to just tell it to write you a blog post intro about a specific topic. And we were also very specific in this prompt. So I asked it to write in the first person when applicable, write in a uplifting tone catered for an audience of entrepreneurs. Now you can go much, much more detailed and I'll actually show you some examples of how how much more detailed you can go when it comes to prompting um, in terms of tonality and style of your writing. I do find that when you ask the AI to write in a first person perspective when applicable, you do get some really personalized outputs. And it's always good for you to um, set the tonality in which you would like the output to be in. And it's also good practice to include the tone that you would like that output to be. And you also want to include what um, your audience is or your target market is for that specific output. Again, just gives the AI more information so that it can be more personalized in your outputs. So in order to test these prompts, I went over to ChatGPT and entered the inputs. So the first prompt is write a blog post intro about how to start a business after bankruptcy. And this was the output in which we got back. And I used the second prompt, which is you're an expert blog post writer and you've been trained on starting a business after bankruptcy for over 20 years and you have the most up-to-date and most relevant information. Your task is to write a blog post intro about that topic, which is starting a business after bankruptcy and write in the first person in a uplifting tone catered for an audience of entrepreneurs. So the first output in which you got back was 
fairly decent i went through this and um it's much more generic i would say it's not as personable as the second output which um talks about being an expert and it talks about how um they know firsthand how challenging and emotionally draining the process can be to start a business after being bankrupt so again it's a little bit more um i would say personable it's more of a first person perspective and much more human-like compared to the first output in which we got back but again honestly both of these outputs were pretty good but if you were a blog post reader i think you would um, relate and connect much more with the second output compared to the first and here's another example of how you can improve your prompt if you're trying to uh, generate keyword uh, research when using ChatGPT. So instead of asking ChatGPT to give you keyword research suggestions for a specific topic, you can go ahead and use the same template and you would ask the AI instead, you are an expert keyword researcher and have been trained on the, whatever that topic is that you're doing research on for the past 20 years and have the most up-to-date and the most relevant information. Your task is to research the most unique but high volume keywords related to that specific topic that not many people will think of. So again, I went ahead and ran this example on ChatGPT. So this is the first basic prompt, which is give me a keyword research um, suggestions for how to make money online. And we got some pretty generic keyword research suggestions. Now I went ahead and used the second prompt, which um, talks about being an expert and talks about getting us the most unique but high volume keywords. And as you can see here, we actually got some fairly decent um, keyword suggestions by the AI. So it actually gave us a little bit of um, clarification as to why it chose those specific keywords. But as you can see here, we got passive income streams, we got micro entrepreneurship, we got digital product creation, virtual events monetization, um, side hustle ideas, and so on. So we got a um, little bit more unique keyword um, research uh, suggestions from using this specific template than um, the generic ones that we got from using the sort of generic prompt as well. So again, you can go ahead and play around with this and use this for any type of topic in which you're trying to do keyword research on. This can be a really, really good tool for you to get some high level information or some keywords that you may not think about. And then you can go ahead and validate those keywords by popping it into a keyword research tool. And here are some other effective prompts that you can use to help you not only get higher quality content, but also reduce the likeliness that the content will be uh, detected by an AI detection tool. So in your prompt, you can include make the writing high in burstiness and perplexity, and this will allow the AI to um, actually write it in a more human-like format, which will reduce the uh, chances that it will be detected as being AI content. And here's another effective prompt that allows you to not only generate high quality content, but also make your content more human-like, uh, making it less likely to be detected as AI written content. And I haven't uh, created this prompt myself. I found this on a YouTube channel called Words at Scale. So if you want to check them out, feel free to do so. So as you can see in this prompt, it's very, very specific in terms of the structure. It's very specific in terms of how they want the AI to actually write the content. So you're really, really directing the AI. Um, in the direction that you like it to go. And you're also making it much more human-like by using a um, prompt like this. And in all of these prompts, you can also try to ask the AI to change the temperature setting. So by increasing the temperature setting, you'll be able to increase the creativity of your outputs. So I actually uh, mentioned this more in depth in my previous video in which I talked about the GPT playground mode because that's where you're actually able to manually change your temperature settings. But if you actually tell um, chat GPT to change your temperature settings, it will actually do that for you as well. And you can find that you're able to get much more creative content that um, wouldn't be detected by AI. So that's another prompt in which you can play around and add that into your existing prompts. And as I mentioned earlier, my fourth tip is to utilize chat GPT prompt tools. And there's actually quite a few tools that you can use to help you get ideas for prompts that you can use when uh, playing around or trying to generate content with chat GPT. So in order to use the chat GPT prompt generator, just enter the prompt on the left hand side that you have in mind. So for this example, we'll be writing a LinkedIn post about working from home. And then on the right hand side here, we'll get a new unique prompt that we can use to help us get much better content or much better quality um, or relevant content on ChatGPT. So the example that we got back here is write a LinkedIn post about working from home. My first request is I want you to act as a web developer. Okay, so sometimes the prompts can be a little bit off, but again, you can still use this format. You start your prompt by saying, write a LinkedIn post about working from home. My first request is I want you to write an in-depth LinkedIn post about working from home um, for busy professionals that um, also work a second job or whatever your post may be about. You can then enter that in there and um, you can use that prompt. So again, these ChatGPT prompt generators are good uh, to give you sort of ideas that you would need, but it's always good for you to test it out yourselves and then uh, pop it into ChatGPT and also 
combine what you get from these prompt generators with what you learn from um, different YouTubers or different online blogs and put that all together into your own unique prompts for your own uh, content which you're generating. And my fifth bonus tip is that you don't need to overly optimize your prompts. As we saw in today's video, you can get very deep and very detailed in your prompting. But in my experience, you don't need to go as deep as uh, some of these prompts show you because these AI language models are very, very smart. So they're still able to give you really, really good outputs. So you need to find that sweet spot in between where you're being as descriptive as you can. You're giving as much content as you can and context to the AI, priming it and uh, combining all of the best practices to really get you the best outputs but again you don't need to be um, overly optimizing and having you know a six or seven line prompt just to get a blog post title or a blog post introduction again it's just about experimenting and finding what works for you but again these tools are very very smart so once you're able to give really high quality inputs you will get back those high quality outputs as well so that's my last and my five tips that you can use today to help you improve your prompting while using chat gpt let me know in the comments below if you found any of these tips useful and also let me know if there's any other prompting tips that you're using that I haven't mentioned in this video. As always, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.